I'm part of the Revolutionary Communist Party here in PEI and I'm here with Rupinder. We are protesting for permanent residency. Are you from here? I know you are from, are you from here. I'm going to step in your face. We are the only one who are suffering because of houses crisis. How much hate did you spread with that video? It's affecting racialized people. Government policies lead to racism. George Floyd's death has been four years. If they don't fulfill our, any of the demands, there will be a hunger strike to death. The recent saga of international students protesting in PEI has been comically absurd, but is also a glaring example of the dire situation Canada is facing with mass immigration. International students and temporary foreign workers from India have been coming to Canada in unprecedented numbers, undermining our system by cheating, scamming, and taking advantage of it, and are now making demands of our government to stay. Meanwhile, Canadians are experiencing a crisis in the cost of living, homelessness, housing availability, and the accelerating erosion of our culture and heritage. It's clear we have enough problems here in Canada without importing more. They have to go back. In 2023, hundreds of Indian students were facing deportation for using fake immigration agents to buy fake offer letters to attend Canadian universities. They protested outside of the airport, and Canadian politicians caved to their demands and let them stay. Stop the deportations. Listen, we have a worker shortage in Canada. We have a demographic problem. Our population is too old. We need 700 young people in our shopping centers, driving truck. This pattern continued in Manitoba as international students organized protests to extend their work permits. We'll look at what we can do to apply pressure to be fair. I can tell you working with the uh, minister provincially uh, and hopefully with uh, Minister Miller, we will promise to work as hard as we can, whether it's myself or Malaya, trying to keep you here in Manitoba. And once again, the weak Canadian politicians caved to their demands. Now in Prince Edward Island, the smallest province in Canada, international students are protesting the government to make it easier for them to become permanent residents. This is despite them not having the necessary skills and Canada not having the capacity to take them in. I said that there is no more space in Prince it Edward Island matter. for service workers. There's no space for anybody on this island. Trust me. You said that there is no you more know space what? in this island. There's no space for anybody. That's including you. They are protesting recent changes to the programs offered to postgraduate international students to get permanent residency, including the government drastically slashing the eligibility for temporary foreign workers to pour coffee at Tim Hortons. We were working in sales sector, food sector, and we are now not even eligible to apply for nomination. They want to have the morning coffee. If there is a wait on 20 minutes on the morning coffee, how will that affect the tourists? Definitely they will be changing locations for their next visit. Definitely they will be looking for some better places to be. Despite PEI going through a cost of living, inflation and housing crisis, leader of the protest movement Rupinder Pal Singh thinks that their presence pouring coffee outweighs all of these issues. Weren't they supposed to come here with the priority of getting an education? Those programs are PR pathways for us. That is what we came here for. It appears not as these so-called international students flocked to PEI from all over Canada to take advantage of a more generous draw for permanent residency. Like people came uh, came over here across Canada. It doesn't matter whether they are from uh, British Columbia or from Alberta, uh, Manitoba, it doesn't matter. Some of them are from uh, Quebec as well. So people uh, uh, chose uh, PEI. The provincial government has since corrected this to reflect the needs of the province. Also, why do all these protesters seem to be from the same ethnic background? If these policies were unfair to international students, why is there only one demographic who seems to have a problem with it? Indian immigration agents on social media advertise getting an education in Canada as a route to permanent residency. The system is built on uh, misinformation. They're all acting as unlicensed immigration consultants across the board, um, almost without exception. Look deeper into this issue and you'll see the reputation of Canadian colleges tanking as their students can't even read, write, or speak English, as well as the fake diploma mill colleges, which barely even pretend to be schools, as these international students scam their way into Canada. Are these the kind of students that Canada desperately needs? Student visa how about these upstanding young gentlemen coming in unvetted? Or maybe these students can enrich the political assassination industry here in Canada? A relevant quote here is, import the third world, become the third world. 
and the garbage Canada has been importing lately has brought literal garbage to our streets, hazards to our roads, and danger to our women. If you was born in Pakistan, originally from Pakistan, you must have been kidnapped by me. Have been kidnapped by you? Of course. Of course, there is no option to get you, right? And this is relevant to the protest because the leaders had to ask their WhatsApp group chat to stop taking women's phone numbers to harass them. It seems like most Canadians in online forums are against these protesters, including in the PEI forum on Reddit, which usually leans liberal on social issues. It seems like the only group that's openly supporting them is the literal Communist Party. Yeah. That's right. I'm part of the Revolutionary Communist Party here in PEI, and I'm here with Rapinder. We are, we are protesting, protesting because uh, last year, July 2023, PEI government changed the rule. And also, uh, whatever this is. These are my people too. Okay. They're not just yours. No way, I'm not claiming they're mine at all. Keep doing this shit. Keep posting. Step away, no, step I'm not back, going to post. I'm not going to step back. I'm going to step in your face. You what did I get wrong about the you video? You got everything wrong. Okay, tell me then. Don't I have a disability too. Me, okay. But then. nobody on this island wants to help me as a person, Vietnam my own people. people. But most concerning is the PEI legislative members who are advocating for these entitled protesters. But thankfully, PEI Premier Dennis King hasn't budged on this issue so far. Hopefully he doesn't cave into the pressure. My job is to do the best that I can for the province as a whole. That's what our policy framework is uh, leading to. That's what we announced in February and that's the road that we're on right now. The protest leaders frequently revert to claims of hate and discrimination in order to deflect criticism. They're spreading hate messages. From our perspective, this looks total discrimination. That definitely feels like racial discrimination. How much hate did you spread with that video? Are you aware with that? They even attempt to brigade their followers to censor videos that are critical of them. I've got a question since you brought up the video. Do you think that it's right to try to get people to try to censor Canadians' opinions on your protest? Then, brother, you should know what's per protest about. Their main organizer. Uh, like, if you get a permission from him uh, so that you guys can post it, otherwise it's a big penalty. If the organizer doesn't want us to upload our own video, yeah. we're not going to upload our video? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd be I'm, I'm so sorry about that. It's not going to be a, uh, a thing where we're not going to upload the video. That's not how things work here in Canada, Rupinder. We at least have some freedom of speech here. And if Canadians went to India and protested the government there, they would be deported. And no, I'm not a bot or a shill or an IT cell working for Modi or Khalistan or whoever. We don't care about your age old blood feuds. We simply want you to stop exploiting our country and leave. The PEI legislative members also claim racism when advocating for the protesters. I've said it before, government policies lead to racism. It's affecting racialized people. I see you and I understand you and I, and I, I know you and I will fight for not even equality, equity, and I stand by you. Tomorrow's George Floyd's anniversary of, his, of George Floyd's death, it's been four years. Maybe that's because that's all they have because they don't really know what's going on either. Even us here as a committee don't understand, and I would put myself at the top of that list for not understanding this. It's as nauseating as it sounds, and it's dehumanizing because people are selected in a draw, and you said if it's lottery, it's a draw, and people are waiting for this, and then the province doesn't draw anybody. What, what kind of hope are we, are we extending to people here? Remember, he just said it's not a lottery. It's even worse than a lottery, because a lottery is random. Uh, this is, I don't know, is this a random draw? How does this work? It's understandable that this whole situation may be hard to understand because the protesters' signs aren't always coherent, they speak in broken English, and most of the posts on their PEI protest Instagram page are in Punjab. But most of all, it's hard to comprehend just how entitled these people really are. You people. These people. These people? Would you clear to clear to clarify what you mean by well, these people? Well, the protesters. People? Okay. Because you might want to watch your language a little bit too. Who are you to decide? How would you know? Are you from here? I know you're are from Are you from here? I am here. I'm here since one and a half year. Are you here since one and a half year? Education. We spend a lot of money to rent as well. So we have the right to stay here. People are here who don't even make 40 points. It's not like they don't deserve. They deserve everything. So, Mr. Singh, you had, uh, you had mentioned um, that healthcare and construction, they're not for you. But there are other options to extend your work permit. The Federal Express Entry Pool, uh, temporary programs if you speak French. Why should I apply for those? Now they want me to learn new language. Why should I do that? Why we are the one should suffer? We are the only one who are suffering of because of houses crisis. We haven't seen nobody else joining us here who are suffering because of these rule changes. 
if there was houses crisis why was ruled rules only changed for immigrants and still i can definitely vouch lots of immigrants have their own homes i haven't seen people wandering around that they haven't have homes we want values we want values if they don't fulfill our any of the demands there will be a hunger strike to death from 1st of june and anything happen to any healthy any health issues to any of the protestant honorable justin trudeau mr mark miller province of pei honorable dennis king and economic growth minister Jen Redman should be held liable for any loss and severe, severe health issues to any of the protesters affected for Zoom. Thank you. Canadian politicians have been selling us out for years now. To greedy corporations who benefit at our expense and invaders who undermine our society and way of life. No one is ever going to integrate into your culture. No one is going to change for you. Good luck. Buckle up, bitch. Most Canadians who know this is wrong won't speak up in fear of being called names like racist. The truth is they can't silence us if enough of us speak up. The changes being made to this country are becoming more irreversible each day. So the time to act is now. The PEI legislature is set to make a decision soon about the fate of these international students. If you live in PEI or ever plan on visiting there, write to them to let them know what you think. We need to stop this pattern of letting our country be walked all over and set a precedent that we won't tolerate it. And more importantly, we must get organized because Canadian politicians have repeatedly failed us. We have a demographic problem. Yes, we do. And that's why we need a moratorium on immigration. And real Canadians need to group together to fight back against our replacement.